Hello everyone and welcome to Carnivorous Plants Hub. Today we're going to take a look at the flytraps and saracenias in the month of July. The main focus of today's video is to talk about Venus flytrap flowers and the impact that they have on your plants if left to bloom. Personally, I've always cut my flowers off and have always allowed very few to actually bloom. I was challenged a few months ago by a seasoned grower that said that flowers have little to no impact on actual growth of their Venus flytraps. So as a challenge, I decided to allow most of mine to flower and see if I could see any negative effects. I didn't want to just let a couple flower, I knew I needed a large sample size to really see if there was any type of major impact. Well, spoiler alert, the flowers have had a major negative impact on my Venus flytraps. I've always tried my best to be as transparent as possible on this channel. And of course, I always want to share successes way more than I want to share my failures. However, I thought this failure was really important. We learned so much from our failures, and I'm hoping that all of you can learn from my failure. Let's dive into the great flower debacle. We are in mid-July, and as you can see, most of my flytraps flowers have just started to bloom. This is later than most places that grow Venus flytraps. Here in Idaho, my growing season is shorter, and the spring period for my flytraps are pushed out a bit, which means July flowers instead of May or June flowers. In climates more suited for Venus flytraps, they'll typically flower in the spring instead of midsummer. I thought mentioning my shorter growing season was important since the impact of the flowers being allowed to grow is even greater in areas where the growing season is shorter. Okay, I'm so sorry for getting distracted. I have a lot more to cover with flowers, but I just saw this fly inside of a UK sawtooth trap and I decided to keep an eye on it and see if we can get a live feeding. This is one of the things that I absolutely love about these plants, to be able to come out to shoot a video and watch the trap in action. I'm really hoping we can see this trap catch the fly. You can get a good look at the trigger hairs there. That's how the fly trap knows to close. Typically, two or more touches of those hairs indicate that there's something alive in the trap. It requires multiple touches so they don't get tricked by a raindrop or a falling leaf. Closing the trap expends energy and the plant doesn't want to use that energy unless it's going to replace it by catching an insect. You can see how much that fly loves the nectar that's secreted by the fly trap. They enjoy it so much, they can actually become intoxicated. This distraction can also assist the fly trap in closing on the fly without it noticing. Oh man, the fly trap tried its best to close down, but the fly was just too fast. Better luck next time, UK Sawtooth. Overall, this is the worst growth that I've seen from my fly traps in all the years I've been growing them. I usually cut the flower stalks when they get to be about 2 or 3 inches and I propagate them. This year I decided to go ahead and let them grow and see what it looked like. Well, as of right now, it looks like my fly traps have mostly just stopped growing. They aren't dying and they're still mostly healthy, but growth has just suspended. Some of the plants stopped putting out large traps and have started putting out much smaller traps. I'm honestly surprised just how big of an impact allowing these fly traps to flower has had on their overall growth. Growth has not only slowed way down, but it's also noticeable how much smaller some of the new traps coming up are compared to the traps the Venus flytrap was putting out this spring before the flowers started growing. I have a lot more that I want to cover about the flytraps flowering, but real quick I wanted to thank you so much for being here. Make sure to pour some water on the like button and subscribe to help my channel grow. I also wanted to invite you to head on over to carnivorousplantshub.com. My premium substrates are available for purchase. My highest rated and most popular products are my carnivorous plant repotting kits, good for fly traps, saracenia, sundews, pings, and more. They come with my premium substrate that I've been working on for years to perfect, and they come with a high quality planter. This takes all the guesswork out of repotting your Venus fly trap or other carnivorous plant. Head on over to my website, carnivorousplantshub.com. Right now, there is a link in the description and the pinned comment. I have videos over there showing you exactly how I make my soil and what ingredients that I use. We've also been working with a designer to create some really fun and stylish carnivorous plant apparel. This is something we've been working really hard on and should be introducing it really soon. So keep your eyes open for that. I'm so excited to be teaming up with California carnivores. They are one of the most experienced and knowledgeable carnivorous plant nurseries in the entire world. They have a massive selection year round of all types of carnivorous plants. There will definitely be something in their nursery that you fall in love with. On top of that, They've been generous enough to offer my viewers an exclusive 10% discount on their order when they enter Bug Eater at checkout. That's B-U-G-E-A-T-E-R, Bug Eater. I have links in the description and the pinned comment so you can head on over and pick out the perfect carnivorous plant to add to your collection. You know you deserve it. Let's go ahead and head on back to the video. In my personal opinion, 
Unless you're 100% dead set on trying to get seeds from Venus flytraps, there's absolutely no logical reason to allow them to flower. This knowledge isn't new to me, I've always known that flowering impacts growth and size of the traps, but I honestly wouldn't have predicted the impact this would cause. But I honestly wouldn't have predicted the impact would be this major. If your flytrap is flowering for any reason, I would recommend immediately chopping the flower off the moment you see it. If you're dead set on using the flower stalks for propagation, allow the stalks to get to be about an inch or two, then chop it off. The flowers are beautiful, don't get me wrong, I love seeing all the flowers bloom. But the beauty of the flowers in no way offset the negative impacts to the fly traps themselves. I'd much rather maintain vigorous growth with larger traps than seeing the flowers bloom. I do have to admit, I took this video in mid-July, and it's now late July. Many of these same fly traps are starting to recover from the great flower debacle. I'll have another video out soon showing the improvements. The problem is, the growing season is already short here. These flowers feel like they set my fly traps back a full month. Some of them are just now hitting their stride that they look like they were going to hit in early spring. The growing season is moving quick and we only have about another month of good consistent weather for these plants to keep growing. I'm definitely mad at myself for conducting this experiment. I honestly wish I had just cut all the flowers and let these plants grow all spring and into the summer. It's clear to see which of these plants I've cut the flowers on and which ones I've allowed to flower. I decided early to cut the flowers on the bimbo, and it's one of the only fly traps that seem to really stand out and continue growing large traps. The only exception that really stands out is the UK Sawtooth 2. It has somehow stayed really vigorous, even with a lot of flowers growing. It does make me wonder though, how crazy would this fly trap have grown if I'd cut off these flowers instead of letting them bloom? With all this being said, I haven't lost any Venus fly traps because of the flowering. Most of the plants look like they're going to make it through, there is one that doesn't look dead, but hasn't been putting out any new growth. It's definitely concerning me just a little bit. It's the sunrise here. But so far, I've had no reason to believe it won't start putting out new growth once it's recovered from flowering. If the rest of your care is on point, flowering in the spring is not a death sentence. It's not likely to kill your Venus flytrap, but it will most certainly slow growth and have an impact on the size of your traps. I also made the decision to let my Saracenia flower this spring, and I've also seen some slightly negative effects there as well. I've not had the same size pitchers as I did last year. It's not as drastic as the Venus flytraps, but I can definitely tell that there have been less pitchers springing up, and they've definitely not gotten as big as they got last year. Next year, I'll be cutting all the flowers on all my carnivorous plants, probably except for the sundews. I really hope this video has been helpful. I want my failures to turn into your successes. Let me make the mistakes so you don't have to. Make sure to like this video and subscribe if you found this video interesting. I'm going to be bringing you another update soon, so make sure and subscribe so you can get updated and notified of that. If you're interested in Venus flytrap care, make sure to take a look at my total Venus flytrap care in under 10 minutes. It should be popping up on the screen right now. Become a master at growing these incredible carnivorous plants. Thank you again for stopping by today. It truly means the world to me, and I hope to catch you in my next video. Bye.